It does have a few faults, specifically when we talk about the build quality. I'm gonna talk about that later in the video. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. It is 8.10. We got 50 degrees out. It doesn't really feel like 50 degrees. It feels a lot warmer than that. I'm in a t-shirt. I'm not freezing, which is fantastic. And the sun is shining. We have a beautiful weather, not a cloud on the sky, as I can tell. And we're gonna talk about five things I hate about my Tesla Model 3, so let's get into it. I don't know if you can hear these crackles in the doors. So if I just let go of the accelerator right now and listen really closely, if you can hear these crackles and uh, creaks going on in the uh, in the door, so I'm just gonna get up to 25 here and then let off. Do you hear that? The whole car, doors, something in the connection to the door is just making this, like it's almost like it's rubber on rubber noise. After 10,000 miles, I just don't think a $60,000 car should do that. Have a look at this. Look how beautiful this is. Hey, dude. That is so cool. Bye. See you later. That's insane. I'm so not used to seeing all this wildlife out here. It makes me so excited. But also, you gotta be very careful when you're driving here. There was apparently a lot more back there, as you can see. Your family out. Really cool. So we're gonna park up here and I'm gonna show, tell you more about uh, the other things that I really don't like with the Tesla Model 3. One thing I can't stand with the new software update, I, I don't think I had this in my old Tesla, but that is when you're playing something, for example, and you have it in when, when it's uh, folded down like this, it's very hard to hit the timeline. Instead, you're hitting all other stuff, icons and so on, because this timeline, just look at how tiny this is. This is the bar that you need to hit in order to get to, you know, fast forward or get to the point in the song where you want to go to. And it's kind of tricky to do that. I just think it would be a lot easier to just uh, have it be a little bigger and not make it so hard to hit the actual timeline and get to where you want to be in the song or the podcast. One other thing that uh, my wife Lindsay had had some issues with is connecting the app to the car. So whenever she goes to unlock the or goes uh, to the car, it should recognize her app and it also should unlock the car, but it doesn't do that. Most of the time she has to just pick up the app and open the app in the phone and then open it manually, which is kind of annoying when you've owned the car for 10,000 miles. You would think that it would rec start recognizing who the owners are. Apparently that's a uh, kind of a problem for a lot of people when you have several drivers onto onto the car. It doesn't recognize all the time when you're walking up to the car and then unlocks the car. You have to do it manually through the app. Another thing we need to talk about are these wheels. So these are the turbine wheels and as you can see they have all been severely dinged and uh, not to throw anyone under the bus here, but I didn't do any of those. I do fix every single thing. It seems to be apparently an issue uh, having these bigger wheels because they seem to hit curbs very easily. And I feel like every, every week I have to bring out my little can of the original paint for the wheels because I know that I'm gonna have touching them up every now and then pretty often and that's what I've been doing. Hopefully we don't get more dings on the wheels. I don't know, uh, I guess I'm not too hopeful. Maybe we'll get a few more. But the thing is, good thing I bought a full little jar or can of this paint. So I have enough paint to uh, touch these up for the foreseeable future. I've heard that if you have the wheel caps, the I think the 18 or 19 inch Tesla wheel caps, they also have a lot of dings on them and because they stick out a little further. And I think it, these also looks like they kind of stick out a little bit more than I'm used to seeing on on wheels. I'm not sure if that's the case. All right, so talking about this interior, what I think about this interior is that it feels, 
it feels a little cold and I would want to have not just everything being located and uh, situated within this display here. You have all the settings for the car except for drive and park and so on here in the display. It makes it a little bit inconvenient specifically when you're driving and you want to go to a setting quick. You need to toggle around in here and figure out where it is and then you're bouncing around when you're driving on the highway. You can't really hit everything. So I want to have a few tactile buttons for the most important uh, settings or functions of the car they did this update recently like when you put it in drive here for example and we put it in the indicator now you can move this around to different areas to whatever position you want but still when I turn this car I want to have the display right here. I love the set, the layout of the new couple of Audis have that and also the Ionic 6, the brand new one, Ionic 6, has exactly the layout that I wish Tesla would have in their EVs as well. It has a more cozy, nice designed interior and it also has the big screens right here, which naturally when you're driving, and you put the indicator on you don't want to look center you don't want to look here to see the to see the camera you actually want to look over there close to the mirror so you can have your peripheral vision also covering the blind spot more it feels unnatural to move down here and look at the side camera okay last but not least this is a big one because uh, we've had this Tesla for about 10,000 miles now and it's been it, it does have some problems quality wise for sure for example when I first got the car if you watched my videos you remember that I had to fix the the liner for the for the wheel well right here because this was flapping around and was very loose so I put some foam inside behind here to push it out so it doesn't stay loose and flap in like 45 miles per hour that was the first issue I had to do and then look up here this thing is actually coming off this this is out of out of alignment this piece feels like it's just glued on here you can see down here how it's coming off this is another problem I recently discovered I don't know if this is gonna fall off eventually and then we have this right here I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like this or if this is like a protective this this might be a protective uh, I don't know sticker on here but this just looks ridiculous, so I might as well, I, I don't know if this is supposed to be here, but <laughs> you know, I might, yeah, I might as well just rip this off right here, because it's coming off eventually anyway. And this is what it looks like underneath. Uh, looks a lot worse than with this thing on, so I think maybe this is supposed to sit on here. But uh, as you could tell, it was coming off already, so sooner or later it was going to come off uh, no matter if I pulled it off or not. The, the panel gaps on this specific Model 3 I think are pretty good for Tesla. You know, Tesla-wise, this is a little big up here, but they look like they have symmetry to them at least. And there's not a lot of big differences in the panel gaps, but they are pretty large. Looking at this gap, for example, and this is something that I think, you know, Tesla has been around now since, the Model 3 has been around since 2018, I believe. And I think that they should have stepped up their quality game a little bit. This is a 2022 model, so they had four years to uh, figure out the quality issues, but things like this is just not acceptable on a 60, 60 whatever we paid for the $65,000 car. It just feels very cheap. And it, I think the interior just adds to that. It just feels like uh, a uh, very, too, almost too simplistic interior that I thought I was gonna get used to after a while. I've been driving Tesla Model 3 for a long time now, but I still miss this homey feeling of the interior. And I wish that's something that, will, that they're gonna update in the next generation Model 3 and also of course the build quality needs to be a lot better another thing that's pretty annoying with the tesla is the charging so when you back into a tesla charger the charging cord itself is so short that you need to get really close to the charging station itself i can't tell you how many times i've seen people try this two three four times just to reach the charging cable so when you do this make sure you don't back too far and hit the charging stations trying to make this work so those are just a few quality issues that I've noticed so far, but I'm sure, pretty sure there's gonna be a couple of more during our ownership of this Tesla Model 3. Don't get me wrong, it's still a pretty fun car to drive, specifically the performance because you have all this torque instantly available to you, but does it feel maybe a little artificial? 
yes, it does. It feels maybe like you're in a uh, inside of a video game. It's a little cold, the experience, which I'm sure a lot of you know by now that EVs, they don't really have that soul that you have when, when you hear the engine revving and you, you engage with the shifter and so on. But other than that, it's a pretty comfortable car. Do more, I like that. It's what everybody should do. Do a little more of uh, what what you like to do. Just took the first one I, I found, and I guess this is Lindsay's cup. I like my cat better than most people. Pretty accurate. So, to sum it up, does Tesla have problems with their, uh, with their cars? Absolutely. One, the build quality is the most important thing that they need to figure out. But also the pricing, I think this is too expensive for what you're paying, specifically the Tesla Model 3 Performance. Yes, it is a performance car, but I think they could reduce the price, specifically when you have an interior like this. I don't really see where the money is going, and it is an electric car, so it doesn't have the same amount of moving parts as uh, an internal combustion engine car. So I'm not really sure where the money is going, probably to development of some new, uh, some new products. But I think Tesla needs to really, I think they've been very comfortable for a long time. And I think they need to start thinking about stepping up their game because there are a lot of other competitors coming in right now, like Hyundai, we have Kia EV6, with a much, in my opinion, a much nicer interior and a lower price point in most cases. And also you have the same performance as the Teslas these days or even more. We also have Audi with a lot of EVs coming out, BMW. Not a fan of those designs, but BMWs in technology and interior design is pretty nice. So they really need to step up their game if they wanna be competitive in this coming market. And that's my five, I think it was five, I'm not even sure. But my things about the Tesla Model 3 that I really don't like. Let me know if you have additional comments to this. I'm sure some of you are gonna get a little agitated by talking uh, negative uh, things about Teslas, but that's okay. That's how you make products better. You point out the areas where they need to improve. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.